Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another youth segment. I welcome all the family members, the parents, the brothers and the sisters and the children. Now, I just want to continue for, from where we left off on our discussion. And we were talking about how to make the most of Ramadan. And obviously the first few days of Ramadan are the type that obviously are challenging and we don't want to waste those first few days. And the best advice that I can give to children, the best advice I can give to parents, let's make the chores or the ibadat, which is the, the worship, easy. And what I mean by that is there's, for those of us, like I said, that are staying at home, that aren't going to school or work, there's a lot around the house to do. There's a lot of chores and there's a lot that we can help with. And one of the things I mentioned was, you know, the preparation of the food in the beginning of the fast and at the end of the fast. Um, but in between that time when we're hungry and thirsty, it's not easy for sure because we're deprived of food and water and we start feeling that hunger. We start feeling that thirst, but we choose not to drink water. We choose not to eat for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we still try our best to do the tasks we would normally do, right? And for those of us that are staying at home, it's really easy to sleep through all of it and wake up at... I, last video, surprisingly, I said 2 p.m. And apparently 2 p.m. is actually pretty early. 12 p.m. is still pretty early. There's uh, most people in the summertime and in Ramadan when we don't have anywhere to go are sleeping until like 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. And I just found out and I'm really surprised. Um, but I understand. I want to say one point about the sleeping all day that... Obviously, it's not encouraged to sleep the whole fast away, but I understand how necessary and important sleep is. So I'm not going to tell the children, the parents, how much sleep they should be getting because I feel like our health is very, very necessary. Our physical health is so important and our mental health is so important in order for us to uplift our spiritual health. So whatever amount of sleep we require to have a healthy mind and a healthy body, we should be trying to take it. Obviously, we should try to make a schedule and try to have alarms that we don't go past a certain amount of sleep and we kind of count our hours when we sleep in the nighttime after Salatul Aisha or Taraweeh that we're praying at home and until we wake up for Suhoor or Sahri. We should be counting those hours and then count the hours after we fall asleep for those of us that have the luxury of being able to fall asleep after uh, Salatul Fajr. We should be counting the hours from then until 9, 10, 1 o'clock, whatever works for us and is giving us the ability to have a strong a uh, mind and a strong body to be able to perform the duties of the day. So basically the important thing is, like I was speaking to the parents, is that when we're asking our kids to do stuff or we're asking our younger brothers and sisters to do things and chores or ibadat, we want to make it easy. The reason I say that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves the small but consistent deed, right? If we're used to reading like one juz of the Qur'an, one sifara of the Qur'an, if we're used to praying 20 raka'at of taraweeh in the nighttime, and we're used to praying tons of nawafil during the day and doing a lot of dhikr and recitation and remembrance of Allah during the whole day and that's how we've been doing our Ramadan for the past 10, 15, 20 years we cannot expect our children who are a lot younger than us and who are a lot less experienced and used to this type of action to do these things, right? Yes, it's very beneficial. Yes, it's important to use the most of Ramadan, but we have to do it in a realistic way. And we have to ex have realistic expectations from our children, from our little brothers and sisters, and from our family members. Some of our family members might be able to do more and some of us less, and we might be the same age, we might be older. Whatever the case is, everyone's ability, physically, mentally, and spiritually is different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that, right? So it's not our job to force our habits on our family, right? Or our friends. We can advise them and ask them to do the best they can because the biggest thing that Allah wants from us is to try our best to do the best we can. That's it. We, if we start expecting our children or our spouses or our family members to do a certain amount of worship or to do a certain amount of chores and it's beyond their capacity, it's beyond their ability, then that is very unrealistic for us and that is very inconsiderate of us to try and expect something like that from them. What's very important for us to do is step in the shoes 
of the people were asking to do chores. Step in the shoes of the people that were asking to do those deeds. And when I'm saying this to the youth, I'm, I'm not saying this so you don't do any type of chores or any type of ibadah. That's not why I'm saying that. I'm not trying to get the children off the hook. I'm just saying to the parents, when we're asking them, let's ask in an easy way that it's easy for them so that way they enjoy it. That way they do not dislike the Qur'an. They don't dislike praying. They don't dislike fasting. That way they enjoy it. And we give them the reasons behind why we're asking them to do certain tasks. Why we're asking them to do the certain prayer. So that way they know the benefit to it. And that is my humble advice to myself first and foremost. And to all of us. That obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Shaykh Walid said in the first episode. He, he looks at the intentions before anything else. And that is the thing that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see that innam al-a'malu binniyat that indeed the deeds they are based on the intention and that is the first thing that we have to correct and make sure that we're doing this for the sake of Allah and the effort that we put into it only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how true that effort is and how able we were at that time so with that I conclude with this humble reminder I hope that we all can benefit from it and apply it to the best of our ability. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.